As a top-ranked university, UC San Diego is home to the Irwin and Joan Jacobs School of Engineering. It's a top-ranked engineering school where we fulfill our mission to educate tomorrow's technology leaders, conduct leading-edge research, drive innovation, and transfer discoveries for the benefit of society. Bioengineering, one of the youngest engineering disciplines, employs the principles and tools of engineering to analyze and solve biological and medical problems. Joining me today is renowned bioengineering researcher, mentor, and founding chair of the Department of Bioengineering, Dr. Xu Chen. And next to him is an innovator, entrepreneur, founder, and CEO of the San Diego biotechnology company, BioLegend, Mr. Gene Lei. Gentlemen, welcome and thank you very much for being here today. Thank you. Thank you. So, Shu, I wanted to explore your thoughts about bioengineering a little bit. So let me ask you, why is it so important to have a bioengineering discipline? Why don't the doctors just solve everything on their own? Bioengineering as a discipline brings together all the knowledge, technology, and advances in engineering for the improvement of the diagnosis, treatment of diseases. So it becomes a very important part of clinical medicine. That is why the doctors need to know bioengineering in order to benefit the patients in their treatment, diagnosis, and uh, everything regarding the health. Great, so let me ask then, would you feel it's true that bioengineering is like a doctor augmenter, special new skills that can be used. For example, looking at time traces of data, not snapshots. Is, is this a case of bioengineering is a, is a doctor amplifier, as it were? Yes, uh, bioengineering helps the doctor to be able to follow the patient, as you said, in terms of time, related development of the disease and the treatment. So this is very important because uh, if we only look at one time and not to look at a time evolution of the process, we don't really get a full appreciation of what is going on with the health of the patient. That is why this kind of approach is very important for the doctors to use to enhance their treatment of the patients and improve their health. As the Dean of Engineering for the last 11 years, I've had many opportunities to talk to many faculty in uh, the department. And one of the things I found very interesting is that it seems every single one of them has a focus on patient outcomes. So can you explore a little bit what engineering how you, how you rethink engineering so that you have specific positive patient outcomes. It doesn't seem to be just research exploration for curiosity's sakes. It seems very directed, very laser focused. Almost every kind of disease process has a uh, underpinning in terms of bioengineering principles and techniques. Uh, for example, uh, in the MRI, diagnosis and treatment of various diseases, such as neurological diseases, cardiovascular diseases, you have to use uh, modern technology of magnetic resonance to uh, look at the patient's brain or heart or other parts of their body to look at the structure and function in terms of uh, normal and disease processes. So the uh, physicians will be able to follow what is going on in the body, in these parts, and in their interactions. You know, we're celebrating uh, the Xu Chen Jin Lei Department of Bioengineering. 
So I think it was 1988 uh, when uh, you moved from Columbia University to UC San Diego. And then a few years later, 1994, when you were the founding chair of the department. What, what was your mindset at the time? What, what was the motivation to make the move? And can you give the audience a, a couple of hints about what the instigating factors, what the driving factors were that made you realize we need a department? Well, Dr. Y.C. Fong and Dr. Benjamin Swifak were the leaders of a bioengineering group within the Department of Applied Mechanics and Engineering Science. So bioengineering was a group, not a department. As a group, you cannot really develop very effectively because there were six groups. Just take a faculty recruitment as an example. You get one after six have been recruited for the department. Mm. One will go to bioengineering. Mm. Uh, this is just one example. And also for education purposes, it has to work with all the other groups uh, rather than for bioengineering alone. And there are different uh, focuses in these different disciplines. So when I came, I found uh, this to be the case, I, and I decided to uh, make every effort to transform the group into a department. And this is not easy because, for one thing, you need the financial support uh, from the university, and the university was in pretty difficult uh, financial situation at that time. So we first uh, set up uh, the uh, infrastructure in terms of research. We jointly together to get a program project grant, a group grant from the National Institutes of Health, and also uh, advanced our training grants so we get our infrastructure prepared. And then, fortunately, the Whitaker Foundation announced that they have this development award, not only to uh, focus research and education, but also to improve the infrastructure. That's exactly what we needed to start up a department. So we applied for the Whitaker Foundation by synergizing all the activities on bioengineering on campus. And we're fortunate that we received a grant of $5 million, which allowed us not only to recruit faculty, develop research, but to establish the infrastructure to make a department possible. Tell us the, tell us the, uh, the inception story, the beginning story of how BioLegend came about. Yeah, the first company, Farm Engine, uh, officially started in 87, I ju uh, joined uh, ADA. And then 10 years later, 97, acquired by uh, BD, uh, used to be called uh, Becton Dixon. And then continued with the BD for about uh, over five years. Uh, then 2001, all the dot-com uh, tech bubble burst. And then 2022, running into recession. And just ev like every time the economy resection, all the big company, you know, they have to do something. So I feel that, uh, you know, the company uh, farming in the time, uh, we are still doing very well. And also there are so, uh, the mark, uh, so many demands from the uh, immu immunologists, the scientists, they, are, they are keep waiting for the good, good tools. And then uh, I thought, you know, it's the time uh, to start my own destination. So that's why 2002, I left company and then started by legend and with a very clear mission. And then from the beginning, I think to build a, to last. So everything with the, what I learned from BD uh, infrastructure and set a very clear mission, uh, enabling legendary discovery from research to cure, which is to accelerate new drug discovery. I'm struck by a certain parallelism in your careers. Even though yours was entrepreneurial and Shu, yours was academic, there's a common theme of doing things that benefit people and humanity. So uh, I'll ask each of you to offer one. So Shu, you know, is there a particular research project you had that you would want to cite as this one had particularly wonderful impact. 
Our research uh, has been focused on the role of the blood cells, uh, the cells lining the blood vessels, the endothelial cells, how they respond to the forces of flow. Atherosclerosis is a very important disease, and it happens not in every blood vessel, but always in regions where the flow is complex and not streamlined, such as the branch points of a vessel or the curvature. And these are the regions where you see atherosclerosis. And we found that the endothelial cells lining the blood vessels in these regions behave differently from the vascular cells lining the straight part because the flow forces, the different flow forces, make them react differently. And in the complex flow areas, the cells behave in a certain way that is prone to atherosclerosis. So we began to dig into the molecular biology, the difference of these cells from the cells in the straight part of the vessel. And more recently, we use uh, uh, novel approaches, we call epigenetics, that is uh, genetic changes, not due to the sequence of DNA, but uh, due to other ways the uh, genes work and uh, how they affect the behavior of the cells. So this is our major contribution to the understanding of vascular cells to atherosclerosis, an important uh, change in many uh, kind of clinical diseases, such as uh, heart attack, uh, uh, stroke, and uh, limping, and all these problems. So it is an important uh, problem to study. So, Gene, I wanted to ask you a similar question. You know, Shu just told a story about, hey, I got curious and about something, and I was able to show uh, the effects, and now people can think about uh, how their lives can be improved. Mm -hmm. um, as a successful entrepreneur and a wonderful businessman, uh, I'm sure that you think from time to time about some parts of your business that are having particularly wonderful results in improving uh, the lives of people. Did you want to share a, a story or two about that? Yes, first of all, I would like to share you know, my, myself. You know, in fact, uh, my major is a veterinary medicine and while I was a senior year, I took uh, advanced immunology. And then from advanced immunology, I learned hybridoma monoclonal antibodies and talk about the benefit of uh, monoclonal antibody. If you can generate a uh, very specific antibody to particular uh, antigen, and then you can large scale production. And especially the time talk about uh, if we in the future could be the very good tool to treat uh, uh, cancer and let the monoclonal antibody identified one particular cancer marker and then took the antibody conjugated with a drug and deliver drug specific to cancer cell and then cure cancer. I said, wow, what a wonderful idea. And also that's, that's inspired me. Since then, all my career, anything I can do monoclonal antibody. So that's how I get into the uh, biotech. So Gene, that's a fantastic answer. Uh, but for the sake of the layperson, I want to uh, simplify the terms a little bit. So you mentioned monoclonal antibody and that it attaches somehow to the cell. So the first thing I'm thinking of is this, is that this is some sort of homing beacon analogy, that there's something on the cell that this monoclonal antibody identifies and latches to and then makes a change. So could you explain a little bit more for the layman, hey, you know, this special protein or molecule or however you want to characterize it has a unique ability to recognize a feature and you're going to exploit that to get the cancer cell to drop its cover as it were, right? The cancer cell is camouflaged in some way. So is that a, uh, would that be an accurate lay description and did you want to embellish on that a little bit? for the sake of the lay person? Well, antibody, you can generate antibody for anything. It's not only the cell surface. And inside the cells, even DNA protein, over the protein circulating in your body, like cytokines. 
And so it's so effective and very specific. There's a beauty of monoclonal antibody, large, able to large scale production and very specific to the antigen you generated, very specific. So in the future, um, all the new drug, now the immunotherapy is the top, top is the, the target. So Gene, would it be safe to say then that you are giving future pharmaceutical compounds a homing system to know exactly where to go because they because some piece of that molecule, perhaps the antibody that you synthesized that BioLegend, is able to serve as a targeting agent and identify the target when it's near and latch to it. This is completely unlike taking aspirin and just soaking your whole body in it. These are molecules that have homing systems that go exactly where they should go. Is that a, lay, a good layman's term summary? I would say that this is the future of uh, medicine, precision medicine, or individualized medicine, or personalized and medicine. And this is the future. And part of that, the antibody, protein, are very specific. Okay, and so then a corollary, would it be safe to say, your company has committed itself to bringing these miracles to scale mm -hmm. so that after they're invented, either by yourself or others, you make it possible, BioLegend makes it possible for a large population to enjoy the benefits of these technological miracles. Is that part of your charter, your mission? Part of our mission is that uh, you know, we are not getting into uh, like a pharmaceutical company develop a new drug. But our mission is to provide all those tools needed, you know, at least in the animal model, or even further down to the pharmaceutical company, they will need the, that tools to continue to develop their own drug. So Gene, thank you very much for a wonderful story about uh, BioLegend. But I want to go back a half a step and ask, how did, how did you first get interested in, in immunology? And how was it you decided to take that interest and translate it into an entrepreneurial effort? Yeah, during my senior year in the college, uh, veterinary medicine, in medicine, uh, and I learned uh, uh, advanced immunology. I learned that uh, monoclonal antibody, uh, hybridoma, and that antibody it would make a very specific to cancer, and then conjugate with drug, and then can cure cancer. Not only that, f that for therapeutics, but as well as a diagnostic, very specific to certain diseases. Uh, diseases. And I thought, wow, that I can use a monoclonal antibody to do a lot of things. So since then, those bearing in my mind. I want to work for a company, work in the uh, monoclonal antibody area. Okay, so the big thing I heard was you got excited about curing cancer, and that drove you through the entire process. Mm -hmm. Shu told a story about he got excited about why deleterious things happen in uh, blood vessels, and that drove his curiosity forward. So we have two very driven, very curiosity-driven, wonderful men that land in San Diego. So what, is there some synergy that you guys see? In other words, does the presence of bioengineering here in San Diego have a special effect on the region that gives the region a special advantage of some sort? Shu, since you're the founder of bioengineering of the department, I'm just curious if you had any thoughts about yes. that. Well, I think it's mutual. The environment in San Diego area really helps UC San Diego bioengineering, and we hope vice versa. We can help the region. The region has such wonderful technologies, such as BioLegend and other companies that advance the application of uh, the result of research to actual practice. 
to uh, make a new products such as reagents and other uh, chemical uh, products that help uh, people's health and vice versa. And uh, also the companies can help the uh, university so that our students can go there for training to learn new technologies and uh, how to apply them, and also for our graduates to have uh, uh, employment, a new career in these companies. So it's really a win-win situation. We also help to advance knowledge by working together. I mean, this is typified by what BioLegend is doing. They're the leader in this area. Shu, sure, wonderful, thank you. Jean, uh, so it, it sounds like you and Shu have some other special collaboration going already. Are there some graduate students going back and forth? Or tell us a little bit about, you know, uh, some of your connections to the department. In fact, uh, Dr. Chen is a student. May start a company, uh, particularly with engineering, but a pr a provide us a platform. But in the platform, if they do need antibody, over proteins. They are looking for a company who will be able to provide that to them. So by legend, always uh, local. And also we have very good reputation about our quality of the antibody and protein. So they always come to us and then asking for collaboration. Yes. I think uh, current one, I was mentioned that uh, yes. Da Yu yes. and this his new company, right? Yes. So he used our antibody. I, one day, I just walk around and I saw Da Yu here. I said, what are you doing here? He <laughs> said, I'm coming here to pick up the antibody. <laughs> he they bought the antibody, but he needs it right away. So he came over to pick it up. So it sounds like this kind of synergy is something enhanced by the environment in San Diego. And both of you gentlemen are enjoying that. Did you want to venture uh, a guess as what specific magic? Is it the sun, the sand, the surf, the climate, or is it people? Or, you know, how do you, what is it that makes that synergy so easy for you to, to enjoy? I often tell my uh, students that uh, about the seven C's, C, the letter C, letters starting with C, uh, these are uh, first uh, compassion. We've got to have passion. And uh, Gene certainly has, is most passionate about his work. And the second is commitment. You have to be dedicated. And Gene typifies a leader who dedicates his life for the uh, improvement of benefits of people. The third C is comprehension. That is learning. You always try to learn new things. And Gene is never satisfied by the status quo. He's always advancing the front, always learning continuously, and uh, as a result, uh, you have creativity, innovation. BioLegend is always having innovation going on, and he also fosters innovations at the university, and we work together. And the next C is cooperation. He cooperates uh, with us and with other uh, uh, ent entities to advance the field. And next C is communication. You have to be able to communicate your thoughts in uh, written and uh, spoken languages. And Gene is excellent with that. And he uh, leads the effort to work with uh, many uh, academic uh, associations, medical associations, such as the Immunology uh, Society and the others. He communicates with them all the time. And he supports their uh, missions. He actually gains uh, awards. Uh, because they appreciate the, his uh, recognition and collaboration. And uh, finally, is consummation. You have to go to completion. And Gene typifies that. He always brings the work to completion to get the products done to help human beings. And these are the seven Cs. So I have the two of you here. Each of you have had outsized influence, not only on each other, but on the region. So we'll see who wants to go first. I'll let you guys choose. So would you, would you take out your crystal ball and gaze into your crystal ball and tell me what you think the wonderful future will be five years from now as a result of all that you've done in your career, all that you've done in your career, 
and the combination of things that you're doing together. How do you think San Diego will be different five years from now? What are your thoughts about that? Well, I think uh, with Gene's uh, most generous, marvelous uh, endowment, I think UCSD Bioengineering will grow and develop at a mass, much faster pace and to a much higher level than before. So we will be able to uh, recruit uh, outstanding faculty and train our students uh, with even better uh, way of training, combining research and uh, practice, technical experience to uh, bring out better products in our students uh, as they graduate. So the next uh, generation of students will be even better than the ones we have. Okay, so Shu, uh, I think the odds of that being a, the actual future are pretty high based on all the things you've described. Gene, did you have I just your own? To, I just wanted yeah. to add on yeah, yeah. Uh, Dr. Chen's uh, uh, comments here. You know, this is so humble. I think a very important here, the next five years crystal ball to me is your department, which I want to keep the legacy of Dr. Chen, the founder of the department, and continue to excel because he has a big dream. He wants the bioengineer, UCSD bioengineer, become the world top three. Okay, so I'll ask one more question, and I'm hoping you can kind of answer together. So imagine in front of us, I have a new student and a new entrepreneur. What advice would the two of you give to each of those? What is your advice to a student in the context of everything you've discussed? What's your advice to a student and what's your advice to an entrepreneur? Shu? My advice to the student is to follow Gene's example. <laughs> Look at what is possible that we might have thought was impossible, but he has shown you can be, it can be done. So they should uh, use the same kind of determination, the same kind of vision, same kind of energy, the same kind of pursuit to achieve what they set out to do. And this will be advancement of uh, uh, the uh, uh, research and application of bioengineering to benefit humankind. What a powerful statement. Gene, no pressure. What would, what would you offer as advice? I, I think uh, I would talk to a student or an entrepreneur. Uh, you know, very important is to follow your heart. It's not everyone can do stand for as an entrepreneur. A startup company is very, very tough. And every day, daily life is totally different. Okay, if we, first thing I will ask you, are you able to take that kind of pressure? Uh, because uh, as an entrepreneur, it, it's not just a science, okay, technology. There's multiple aspects you have to take care of them. And any time you can face the trouble, for example, you're running out of money, where's your money coming from? <laughs> I think money is still very important, right? If you have a very good connection with uh, uh, your funding uh, source. If not, you know what, that, that no matter how good idea you have, very difficult to execute that. And so, if you get ready, you hard, go for it and give it a try, right? Yeah. I okay. fully agree with what Gene said. Follow your heart. You've got to have heart. Excellent. Gentlemen, I want to thank you very, very much, and I really appreciate the heartfelt comments that uh, you've shared with me and with our audience today. Thank you, gentlemen. Well, thank you. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.